Hello, my friends. This is a review for chapter 8 and 19. And um, overall, chapter 8, we got introduced to reflection and refraction. A few ideas about a reflection from mirrors and refraction from uh, surfaces and lenses. Uh, you're there. Uh, we learned about ray tracing and how it works. And thin lens equation was a very important part of that. Although it is called thin lens equation, it also applies to mirrors. And it's for a uh, curved mirrors. Uh, chapter 19 is mainly the same ideas, only now we have combined uh, devices, two uh, mirrors or two lenses to uh, work together and give us an image. Uh, it starts with pinhole camera and then how camera works. Uh, and then how I works alone, those would be one device's optical instruments, and then we move on to talking about uh, two devices' optical instruments, which mainly would be microscopes and telescopes, or I with a magnifying glass, or I with a glasses, and so on. Um, so we started with reflection, and for the reflection we had one simple law, uh, in uh, the angle that the incoming ray makes with the normal is equal to the angle that the outgoing ray makes with the normal. Um, we had talked about how we can have diffuse reflection from not very smooth surfaces and how we can have specular reflection from uh, smooth surfaces. For us to see any image, the reflected or refracted will get the two light rays should come into our eyes. So how we generally see is there are many different directions of reflections from surfaces, and some of those comes to our eyes. Our eyes observe them and we see images. Um, I didn't go as far back as to talk about ray uh, optics or how we assume that the light is a ray. Uh, on the macroscopic scale it works well, but um, we are applying the ray optics. Assuming light is like a line of light coming together. We'll talk about light a little bit in the next unit, but for now, this is good enough to know. So that's reflection. That's the only law of reflection. Incoming angle is equal to reflected angle. And those angles are, again, always from the, the normal. Normal is a line that is perpendicular to the surface of interest. Refraction is a change of direction of light as it goes from one media to another. Uh, refraction happens if we have a transparent media, of course, like glass or water. If we have non-transparent media, we have reflection only. Uh, for refraction, there's also a little bit of reflected part on the surface here, but we will be focusing on the refraction here. Um, two important informations here, if there is a light ray going from a low index of refraction to high index of refraction, index of refractions are defined by ends here, so low to high, light ray goes closer to the normal, normal is again important here, the perpendicular line to our surface. And if the if it's the other way around, going from this way, light ray would go away from the normal. So high index to low index, light ray goes away from the normal. Low index to high index, it goes towards the normal. For the refraction, we have a very simple law. The index of refraction in one region times the sine of the angle light ray makes with the normal is equal to index of refraction on the other region where the ray goes times the sine of the angle it makes with the normal there. This image nicely shows what's happening. I have an incident rate from N1, index of refraction 1, it makes an angle theta 1 with the normal, it goes to the other region with angle theta 2, and we can apply this law to here to calculate values. Uh, let's say n1, n2, and theta 1 are given, we can find theta 2, or any other 3 are given, we can find the unknown one. Index of refraction is simply defined as the um, speed of light in the vacuum divided by speed inside the, um, the media. Um, 
speed of light in vacuum is 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second. And if we can measure the speed of light in, in a medium, we can calculate its index of refraction. Or if, I know, if we know its index of refraction n, we can calculate its speed of light inside there. Okay, let me define that here. N is index of refraction. There's another important thing here, which is, which is what we call in the total internal reflection. And that happens if we have a certain angle from a low index, high index to low index. So if I'm sending light from water to air, for example, it could happen, or glass to air, from high index to low index, uh, light ray goes away from the normal. As I increase the incoming angle, it goes more and more away, as you see in succession here. And at some point, we have what we call total internal reflection starting, where we have a refraction barely on the surface limit for what we call critical angle. So at critical angle, there is no more refraction on the other side, only on the surface a weak refraction, and most of the light is reflected to the high index region. Applying Snell's law, we can find this critical angle. So if I apply Snell's law, theta 2 is 90 degree, sine 90 is 1. Put those, and I'm going to get this equation for critical angle. We can directly apply this equation to find the critical angle from a low index, high index to low index, but we should keep in mind N2 is always the low index side and one is the high index side. Or I can go ahead and use Snell's law. It comes from Snell's law. N1 sine theta critical is equal to N2 Okay, it didn't fit in here. Let me write it somewhere else. I'll put it over here. N1 sine theta critical is equal to N2, N2 sine 90. So here, 90 is my theta 2, and critical angle is my theta 1. When this situation holds, also will give me the correct value. So if you're asked about critical angle or any question related to critical angle, you can go either way. This way to find critical angle or start from Snell's law to find the critical angle. How the image forms when the rays or their extension combines and, co and then we, the, the rays comes to our eyes, we can see those images. If the extensions are combined, like in here, we have a virtual image. If the rays are combining, like in this case, we have a real image. So two types of images. And again, those rays should come to our eyes. Our eyes should collect them so we can see. Or here. These rays come to my eye. Their extension is collected, so I see a virtual image. Um, we have special rays for mirrors and lenses to do ray tracing and see where the image is and if it's real or if it's uh, uh, virtual. Um, ray tracing for, for lenses and ray tracing for mirrors I put here together because they are very similar. Um, Convergent lens. Uh, send two rays, they send three rays here. It's a, also a very good review for three special types of rays we have for a convergent lens. Parallel ray refracts to the other side, passing through the focal point. The ray that passes through the focal point refracts as parallel to the other side. And we see that they combine here. I send them from the tip of the object, it means tip of the image will be here. Then I can go ahead and complete the rest of the image. And the third special ray would be the, the ray going through the center of the 
lens, converging lens, just goes directly. And as you see, all three combined here. The rays combined, so I have a real image. If the extensions are combined, I will have a virtual image. Uh, we discussed that if we start from far away at infinity, our image, image of the object would be on the other side at focal point here, very small. As the object comes closer, image goes farther and gets larger and larger until the object comes in between, like in this figure here, in between the, the lens and the focal point then the, there's no way the rays can combine so no real image but if we trace their extensions we will see that they will be combined at a point behind the object and we can trace and complete that into an image we will see we will have a virtual image because the extensions are combining and it is larger from the ray tracing uh, again, we could send two rays to give us the result, but we have three rays sent here. Um, convergent mirrors are very similar to convergent lenses. Only difference will be if I have a real image, like in this case here, it will be on the same side as the object because we have reflect in here. Now, right, I have still same type of spatial rays, parallel. This time reflects, can't go to the other side. I have a mirror here, blocks it, reflects it. So reflects back, passes through the focal point. The one passing through the focal point, this guy over here, reflects parallel, they combine, and then I have the tip of my image here, I complete my image logically. I don't have to keep sending rays. In real life, there are billions of rays going through and coming to our eyes, but we even did all them symbolically in the ray tracing. There is a third special ray for the convergent mirror. The one comes to the center will reflect at the same angle. It's a simple angle of uh, the, the refraction, um, law of ref reflection, so the same angle. Angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection here. And the same thing happens for the mirrors as well. A apart from the fact that the image is still real here because the rays are combining. And apart from the fact that the image and object are on the same side of the mirror, the rest is similar. If I have an object at infinity, the image is at focal point and very small. As the object comes closer, image goes farther away and gets larger and larger until my object comes in between the focal point in the mirror then when I send my special rays parallel reflect from the focal point I can send another one coming from the focal point reflects parallel or the one goes to the, the middle of the mirror reflects with the same angle I will see that there's no way the rays are combined on the left side here of the mirror. But their extension are combined at this point, at behind the mirror. And I'll have a virtual image there. Because extensions are combining, uh, this will be the tip of the image I see. And then I complete into an uh, image logically. And I will say I have right side up virtual image. So this is convergent lens and mirror. Divergent lens and mirror are also similar. When we send special rays, this time we have special rays relating to extensions. If I send a parallel ray to a divergent lens, it will refract to the other side in a way that is extension this time, passing through the focal point. Well, here, let's do this slowly. This is the focal point. Um, let me erase here a little bit to make it look better. So here are the extensions nicely shown already. I just want to trace them for you. Um, and the sending one the, whose extension passing through the focal point on the other side refracts it pa as parallel. There's no way these rays will combine anywhere on the right side. So the image will be on the left side. 
their extension will combine in here and that will always be the case only if my object is at infinity its image goes to focal point that's the farthest it can go other than that always in between the focal point and the lens on the same side as the object right side up smaller virtual not many interesting things happen in here always the same um, and mirror the divergent mirror is also very similar always virtual in between the focal point and the mirror uh, light rays are also very similar to convert divergent lens and always extensions combines and we have a virtual image right side up in between focal point and the mirror small and object notice the difference though the virtual image is behind the mirror on the other side not on the same side as the object for the mirror but for the lens object and the image are on the same side that's general difference the same goes for converging lens and mirror real images uh, for lenses on the other side, the rest, uh, the, less the other features are similar, upside down, smaller or larger, depending on where the object is. But for convergent mirror, it's on the same side. Virtual image is opposite. Virtual image for a convergent lens is on the same side as the object, but virtual image for a convergent mirror, convergent mirror, is on the other side behind the mirror and um, this is here is a summary of what happens of the images for convergent lens start from very far away point my image is very close to focal point and small my object comes closer image goes farther away and gets larger at exactly 2f image will be at 2f and as you see, rays are combining, it's real, real, real. And as my object comes closer and closer, image goes farther and farther, gets larger, still real, until my object reaches the focal point, image goes to infinity. In between the focal point and my lens i have image on the same side behind the object larger than the object right side up that's convergent lens divergent lens always always my object um, no matter where, where my object is my image is in between the lens and the focal point uh, smaller than the object right side up virtual because the extensions are combining the farthest it can go is the focal point when my aim object is at infinity. And this one is summarizing the same for mirrors. Converging mirror, infinity, object, object is at infinity, image is at focal point, small. Object comes closer, image goes farther away, gets larger and larger. Notice though, image and object are on the same side here. Rays are combining real, so this is real, real. My object gets, keeps going farther and farther. Looks like red, isn't it? Okay, real, real image. Real image. At exactly 2F, two times the focal point, image and object are in the same position, but still image upside down same size because they're in the same position image is still upside down real because rays are combining my object comes closer the image goes farther gets larger than the object until my object comes in between the focal point and the mirror then i have a virtual image behind the mirror larger than the object divergent mirror no matter what my, where my object is, image is always in between the focal point and the mirror, behind the mirror, virtual, right side up. The farthest it can go, if my object is at infinity, it can go as far as focal point, it will be small. So always these two pages are your go-to pages to check if your answer makes sense 
Which type of situation you have in a, si in a question? Is your object too far away for a converging lens, for example, outside of the focal point? You have this situation. If, if you are too F, you have this situation. You can always go to these pages and cheat from them. Let's see, I gave you the focal point of a converging lens is 5 centimeters, and I have an object at 10 centimeters, twice the focal point. That's what you're expecting to find here. Uh, make sure you read through and understand what are these images. Don't just look at it. And similar to here, any questions about mirrors, come back to this page to see which situation is corresponding to the question you have. If you get a question, for example, you have a focal point 10, your ob object is 5 centimeters away, then you are in this case. So you are expecting a virtual image behind the mirror. Virtual image as prime distance will be negative. We'll get there. There is this relation between the height of the image and height of the object. Primes here are for images and the others are for objects. So S prime is the image distance from the lens in this case. You see here I have this image. Its height is H prime and its distance from the lens is S prime. And S and H are the height of the object and the distance of the object from the lens. This situation holds. The distances and heights are related, directly proportional. And if I'm asked for finding the magnification, this is the equation for it. It could be plus or minus, uh, but often we use the absolute value for the magnification and I can use heights to get the magnification or I can use distances to get to the magnification. From the similarities of the triangles we can uh, derive a very important equation what we call the thin lens equation as you see here and we'll use it to find the distances. F is the focal point here S prime again is the distance of image to the mirror or lens, although this is called thin lens equation, it holds for mirrors as well. S is the distance of the object. And you can apply it to all curved mirrors and lenses. Um, there is an important thing here, positivity, negativity thread, you want to be careful about. Uh, distance of image is always positive. Distance of object is positive. Sorry, distance of object is always positive. Distance of image is positive for real, negative for virtual images. Distance of focal point positive for converging, negative for divergent lenses or mirrors. From this equation, you can also see if the magnification is positive or negative. If I have an imaginary upright uh, image, magnification will be positive because here S prime will be negative and it will change it negative to positive. If I have an inverted real image, magnific magnification will be negative. A question here, answers are given for you folks. I want you to solve it for yourself. I'm going to tell you how to solve it, uh, but I want you to solve it yourself and find the answer as well. I'm going to give you the directions and I won't go through it all. I'm going to put the annotated version for the full solution. But the question is a 4 cm tall object, 14 cm in front of a divergent lens. I'm going to try to draw a picture to help me see things better here. Here's my divergent lens. Uh, I have an object, maybe I'll use yellow for the object, this is my object, uh, it's H, this is height, it's distance from the center of my lens, S is 14 centimeters, its height is 4 centimeters. 
and my lens has a focal point of 20 centimeters so focal point out there somewhere I have to extend this okay I'll put it right here somewhere and the focal point is minus 20 focal point should be minus for con diverging anything this is given as minus three directly directly so it's a nice clue uh, this is supposed to be B here mm -hmm. Uh, a. What is the image's position? Thin lens equation tells me that 1 over f is equal to 1 over s plus 1 over s prime. I'm going to take this guy as negative. We'll see what this will be. 1 over s prime I'm solving for. I'm going to leave that alone and I'm going to do this. One over s prime. This cause guy goes to the other side is negative. Is equal to one over f minus one over s. Find the value inverse it. That is your s prime. So s prime is equal to one over f minus one over s. And you should find this value here. First of all, it should be negative. Again, I can cheat a little bit here. Go back to my notes and check here. The only option I have is in between focal point and the lens. If this is my object, this is my image, always in the front of the image, object, smaller than the object, right side up, virtual, and these are the futures actually. Part B is asking about how to describe the image or properties of the image. I can directly cheat from there. Another thing I can cheat from is it's a virtual image. I'm expecting a negative value for this guy. That could help me if I to figure out if I did the question negative. Uh, question correctly. If I found a positive value, probably I made a mistake right that's how you'll find s prime and again it should be minus 8.2 how do i find the the size of the image again i cheated i checked i said okay this the image should be somewhere here right virtual right side up in between the focal point on and the mirror and generally in front of my object Part B is asking me describing it i totally can cheat from the Im the figure and say it should be always virtual this is a divergent lens it should be always right side up i could add here actually uh, that it's smaller always and in this case always will be also will be smaller than the object um i skipped here it asks you also to calculate the size of the image, you will also see that it will be smaller because we will use this equation h prime over h is equal to s prime over s to get that and you should get a value of 2.35 centimeters lower than 4 centimeters after the chapter 18 we talk about the deflection refraction chapter 19 uses those ideas to understand help us understand how the eye works how the camera works and so on uh, we can do ray tracing to see how the eye works eye has a lens and a cornea in the front but they all together we are assuming we have one lens here that works for us and puts images on our screen of our eyes which is the back side of our eye is um, where the image is forms. I'm going to use maybe red here. Here's the image. Um, all right. Camera is an imitation of our eyes, actually. We put a lens in the front of the camera. Convergent lens, converse lights, and put them into a screen. Of course, there are many rays coming here, forming an image. And then we read that image through a computerized uh, detector called CCD detector. So, very similar working um, types is the eyes and, and the uh, camera. 
um, to adjust for the farther and close, smaller, uh, closer images, our eyes changes the focal point, which is amazing. We discussed in class by re relaxing the eye, so the lens is longer and has a larger focal point for far away objects and by bulging the lens so it will have a closer focal point and still we'll be able to focus the light in the back of our eyes which is called retina here um, for a closer objects for camera we can't do that but what we do is move the lens closer or farther to focus the image closer uh, or farther images objects sorry um, this part is about how we have we develop problems but we can see close objects we can see far objects which is called hyperopia we can see far okay but close uh, closer images we get blurry images um, or myopia um, if you have any questions, you can come back here to review this part to see. Uh, but what I would think about asking, what we do to correct these is, put, is to put convergent lenses uh, or divergent lenses. If we have myopia, is nearsightedness we can see near, but to see eye, our eye, to see far, our eye um, is not able to relax. So relaxing is relaxing the um, lens is hard for our eyes it can't relax it's as good as uh, normal eyes so we have the images for farther objects in the front of the retina we're going to push it backward a bit so you put a divergent lens here and for the hyperopia we can see far well, our, our uh, lens can relax and have a larger optical uh, focal point, but close by objects, it focuses them, it can't really bulge, in, bulge enough to focus it on the retina, focus, focuses it behind the retina. Then we correct it by adding some more focusing, convergent lens, to focus it on the retina. Um, if any question comes up, it would be, Two opti optical devices, uh, optical instruments with two devices for this guy, for example, we would have two convergent lenses, right? Uh, one is eye, eye lens, the other is glasses. And any question would be, if I have an image here, how would I see the ob object here, sorry, how would I see the image and say, let's say I'm looking at a tree here and so on. And for this case, myopia, it would be, again, two devices. One is a divergent lens, right, in front of our eye. That's the glasses. And then our eye lens, which is always a convergent lens. So we talked about uh, how to deal with images with two optical devices. That's, these are two cases of two optical devices. That's, um, so we notice we can apply thin lens equation, we can apply ray tracing to understand how eye and glasses works. Um, power is a simple matter of, um, simple matter of uh, optical devices, it's just one with the focal point. And if we add a glass in front of our eyes, we are increasing its power. Um, if we add a convergent lens, power will be larger. If we add a divergent lens, um, sorry, this is, I'm going to go back to it. This is, this is power. Since 1 over F is related to those, I can relate power to those as well. But um, I'm going to focus on this guy here. And if I add glasses, I am changing the power. Notice here, power is 1 over F. If I'm putting a divergent lens, I am decreasing the refraction this is called refractive power and this is what we do if we have um, myopia I wanna I wanna refract the light re less right 
and in this case I want to reflect the light more so I want to increase the power here decrease the power there this is another thing we quickly discussed but all you have to do is if you get a question just add the powers if we have a divergent lens we will know the focal point is negative it will have a negative power and add it and that's what we actually do when we go to doctor they try and see what they should do and some of us has plus uh, numbers for our glasses some of, some of us has minus numbers that's how much power they are adding to us um, we know focal point is a length if we take the focal point as meters power will be meters to minus one in medicine we have a name for that it's called diopter that's a detail um, but it's simply meters to minus one um, magnification, don't worry about these. They are simple equations, but we didn't have time to cover them. Any question about, um, telescopes and microscopes would also involve two lenses. I have two lenses for a telescope. Both of them are convergent lenses. I have one with the larger focal point and another with the smaller focal point. And I put a distance in between them exactly equal to the addition of their focal point which gives me good images nicely magnified images to see view from from the sky and a very similar setup for the microscopes this one is an optical question uh, geometrical question sorry of course optical too we'll do, we do ray tracing here and what the question is asking we send a ray in this fashion to a plane mirror and how will the ray reflect from the second mirror? What will be the angle it makes with the second mirror after it reflects? All I have to do here is to do ray tracing and follow the idea that incoming angle with the normal is equal to outgoing angle. So I'm going to draw a normal here. And I'm going to try to reflect my incoming ray exactly equal to this incoming angle, which should be 55 because total is 90, this is 45 here. Uh, as I reflect my, let's try that, this is right about there, as I reflect my Array. This will be 55. Now this full angle here is 90. This will be 35, and this will also be 55. This is also 90. And as the law of reflection goes, if I draw my normal here too, my ratio should have the same angle with the normal let me here's a line here oops let's try that again same angle with the normal it will be something like that if this angle was 55 this will also be 55 because that angle incoming angle should be equal to that right that means whatever i find here this is 90 90 minus 55 so it will be 35 35 here but the angle it makes it the surface should also be the same if the angle it makes it the normal is the same right that's the idea there all right i'll leave it at that Please review these and ask me any questions.